Good, great. Good evening. Welcome to the February 12, 2015 Sherman Board of Selectmen meeting. Uh, first order of business, we'll ask our town administrator, Dave Williams, to read the agenda, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. First, we'll vote to approve or amend the agenda and add topics not reasonably anticipated by the chair 48 hours in advance. I'm not aware of any of those items right now. And then a public comment period of about 10 minutes. And we have two um, people who have signed up for public comment. And then um, an Eagle Scout proclamation for Grant Wilson Gregory and Mark Elias Chisler. And then request of Pine Hill School CSA for a donation of a non-resident farm pond sticker for the 2015 auction. And then under new business, we have a traffic safety appointment and um, nothing under routine business, but we will start talking about the 2015 annual town meeting warrant, the capital items and the FY16 budget. Uh, we'll give you a, a quick staffing update, then selectman reports, and set the next meeting date. There is uh, there are no mo minutes to approve, and there's one single warrant item. All right, great, very good. Uh, first, oh, Paul, yeah. Can I su suggest, which I think you are going to plan to do? I hope we yeah. have the chiefs talk about why. Sherburn's not going to have any snow in the next month. I think, yeah, that is that. That's the plan. I don't know if they were the public comment or if that was an additional. They, they put. Are they the public comment? Signed up for. Okay, so so let's approve the agenda. We have a motion so to approve. Just a quick oh, okay. question. We last meeting we said we were going to do farm pond fees, but we're not going to be able to do that, right? We uh, we put it on the agenda for the twenty fifth. All right. Hopefully, we'll have that in time for Nancy's mailing, because that was the time thing. The, um, so w she's shaking her head. Okay. okay. The fee with, that we're going to propose is sixty to seventy-five dollars. So a fifteen-dollar increase. So it's seventy-five dollars, and last time it was sixty. So that's what we'll talk about on the twenty-fifth. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. So move to uh, approve the agenda as read. Yeah. Second for the agenda. Just if you're going to have this under public comment, does that give them enough time? Um, they said they'll do 10 minutes. Uh, I think they probably can. If there's questions, we can go longer. Ed offered to do 25 minutes. Yeah, well, we, we, we can vote to go longer if we want to, I guess. Not stand up. Can, can we interact when they're doing public comment and ask questions versus having them, them, them on the agenda? Sure. Yeah. Well, we can add them to the agenda. Sure. We can add them to the agenda. You want to just add them to the agenda and they can interact? I think that's safer. All right. So the agenda. second to amend the agenda to add the uh, chiefs. And Okay, good. Second. All in favor? All right, great. Okay. That's what we're doing. You're now officially on the agenda. You don't have to be public comment. Woohoo! <laughs> all right. So uh, thanks for coming in, all of you. I know you, this has been an unusually busy week in your already busy schedules, and um, we appreciate it. And we suggested I, su I suggested with David that uh, he see if you could come in, just because I know the public is probably very interested in snow clearing. Uh, you know, the status of your crews and your forces. And <coughs> Um, you know, how things are being handled during these really rough uh, weather days that we've had a whole slew of and maybe one coming up. So uh, whoever is going, is Tim, Tim Chief, Chief Marcy? Yeah, I mean, we've been commiserating now for, what, two and a half, three weeks here <laughs> before the first blizzard, and now number two uh, on the blizzard uh, scale comes this weekend. So, yeah, that fits right into uh, we figured we wanted to come and talk to the, the citizens. Uh, so far, so good. We've made progress uh, through all these storms. We've kept our head above water the whole time. Uh, a few bumps along the way with uh, the snowplow burning up and everything, kind of unforeseen, but things happen. It was mechanical, not something that uh, could be taken care of uh, immediately. But we were able to get a replacement plow from MEMA, fortunately, for the past couple of days, and they've been out there plowing and widening the roads, and if people have been out, on some of our narrower roads, they've noticed they've been pushed back, so that's good. Um, we've been able to even build a little shelf uh, along some of those roads so that the next storm, hopefully not what they're forecasting this weekend, will be, uh, we'll have a place to put it. And that kind of leads into some of uh, the messages that I've, we have sent out over the past week with the, the town's notification system, the code red. Again, uh, we, re we recommend to uh, the citizens of Sherburne if you have not signed up for Code Red, it's on the town's website. It takes all of about one minute to sign up for to get emergency notifications right to your phone at home, your cell phone, text messages, the whole, the whole shebang. And it, there's no cost to you for this. But we've been mentioning to people, make sure your rules are clear. 
of snow, wherever possible, wherever you can safely do it. We've had a number of phone calls. There are a number of people in town with leaky roofs, leaky windows, leaky basements. Um, you're, you're, in, you're in good company. Uh, lots of ice dams out there. You, you, you can just look to your neighbor's house to find one, I'm sure. Um, there are people, there are contractors that are insured that uh, you can contact and try to make arrangements with. <coughs> if you're unable to get that snow and ice off of there. Um, just make, again, make sure they're insured. We don't want anybody uh, having any, any problems and uh, any legal issues to come up with that. Please watch the end of your driveways. Everybody has a lot of snow at the end of their driveways. We've all run out of room to put it. I, we get it. There's, just like on the roads, you have very little place to put it, even if you have a snow thrower that only throws so far. But watch the end of your driveways, one for your sight lines. Uh, people can't see you backing out, and you can't see them backing out like we can during the rest of the year. We don't want accidents at the end. Please advise your contractors if they're plowing your driveways not to push the snow into the road and leave it there. They've got to clean up their messes. It's not for CMD to have to clean up your driveway stuff, and it should not be in the middle of the road impeding traffic. Uh, yes, we have the new storm. They put out the weather watch at 4 o'clock this afternoon. Please plan accordingly. Tomorrow's Friday, probably a better day to go to the store. Uh, it's not the Valentine's uh, Day gift. We probably want to give to our loved ones and that's probably not the one they want to receive but it is what it is at least it's on the weekend and it's the prior to a vacation uh, school vacation week but go to the store and uh, plan on hunkering down for the weekend on the warmer side of things this stuff's got to go eventually and we are getting towards the middle of the month you have to start planning for where all the snow is going to go and that means it's going to melt eventually Hopefully, and none of us have a crystal ball, hopefully we have a nice slow melt like we've had in some years, but we all know this is New England. We could get rain, we could get freezing rain. The ground is hard. It's gotta go somewhere. And unfortunately, basements are the number one receptacle for melting snow uh, in New England. Plan now for the melting of snow. If your basement t traditionally floods, be prepared, make sure your sump pump works, make sure the stuff is off your basement floor, make sure your rugs are up or ready. Don't wait until we get that quick thaw and it starts coming through your basement windows or over your cellar hatchway stairs and then trying to do something. Now's the time to plan. Granted, it's very cold out. It's gonna be very cold next week, but eventually it's gonna warm up. Eventually it's gotta go somewhere. So. I'll leave it. That was cheery. That's I, it, it is, <laughs> but uh, you know, from an emergency management point of view, you got to start thinking about it now. Uh, the cheery part is, <coughs> melting comes the warmth. I, I, I did have a question. Is there anything people should be doing in terms of uh, safety, clearing access ways, clearing vents, things like things exactly. like that? Exactly. Uh, clear your heating vents, if, especially if you're using a gas-powered uh, heater in your home, a fireplace insert, something like that. Watch for snow drifts. You want a, a, a couple of feet of clearance around that. Uh, remember your oil man. If you use home heating oil, he's got to get from your driveway or the street to your oil tank. Try to give him a path to get there. Same if you have propane. Uh, the propane tanks in the back of your house, uh, if it's 20 feet or 200 feet from the driveway, makes a big difference from the guy delivering it, uh, being able to safely get there and uh, get you your energy that you want great thanks like she said we've been uh, we've been all putting in some uh, very very long hours and um, our biggest challenge has been where to put the snow and with the rising snow banks a lot of our smaller one tons are rendered useless they just don't have the capability of throwing the snow up and over the snow banks. And like the chief said, we were able to, uh, through the state, pick up a, a larger truck with a wing plow. We've been utilizing the wing plow to knock the snow banks back some. Uh, we've also been utilizing our sick card snow blower. And we've been getting that thing out. It's slow going, um, but we were able to gain a couple, three feet on each side of the road, depending on which roadway, uh, but it is slow going. And uh, that's the constant challenge is to uh, widen everything out the best we can. And then in places like on Hunting, Brush Hill, you have the constant car traffic 
hitting the sides, pulling the snow back in the middle. So we're, um, you know, the appearance, it's not been plowed, but it's actually being plowed a couple times each day. Okay. <laughs> What about sidewalks? Do you, do you guys handle sidewalks? Or we've, you uh, we've actually uh, stayed right on top of those sidewalks. We broke um, uh, personnel off during uh, the storm in between the uh, the different lulls and stayed right on top of them, and they're actually all completely passable, which is amazing. That's good. Chief? Yeah, I think uh, the fire chief and Ed pretty much touched on all the topics. Um, we've been in uh, communication throughout all the storms, and we've done that. We've, we've had a great communication system since I've been chief here. Um, anytime we run into any kind of issues that are uh, concerning, for example, when the um, Ed's 10-wheeler decided to catch on fire, we would reach out to David and let him know what's going on to kind of keep him in the loop. Um, and aside from that, um, as Ed mentioned, um, uh, there's really no place to put the snow. Um, and uh, my brother, his wife, and my niece and nephew are in Hawaii. And he continues to send me these wonderful pictures of the beach. So I've told him if he keeps sending me these pictures, we're going to use his property as a snow dump for the town. So <laughs> it's an option. All right, great. Hey, thanks. Does anybody out there have any questions, Susan? Yeah, I don't know if everybody saw this, but yesterday the, uh, the police department up in Merrimack, New Hampshire, came to the warrant for the arrest of Cox and Tommy Bill. Oh, well, that's a smart thing to do. And he's been on my radar for a while now, so if anybody sees that rodent, uh, we'll be more than happy to help them with that. Yes. Set up a task force. Yeah. So, so, yeah, so you guys, all, all you guys, I really appreciate the efforts that your teams put in, you guys put in throughout many nights, long hours, and so forth. I know everybody's out there in harm's way during these storms while we're all comfy and warm and toasty and not worrying about it. Um, and, and Tim, since you're, you're, I guess, as emergency director, you, you're in essence the point person on all of this. And I really appreciated the, you know, the updates you were providing in the first, the big, the first big blizzard we had. It was a lull of updates in the last couple of storms. So I just would appreciate updates, even if you're, there's nothing to say other than all is well. Sure. I just, those, sure. those it, come in handy knowing what's The second what's one was on. kind of, you know, it blew up on us in the sense that it decided to stay. Yeah. It wasn't supposed to. It was a routine uh, snowstorm, if you will, that we get in New England, and really we weren't getting much out of MEMA either other than it's snowing, and then it kept snowing and snowing and yeah. it just I hung mean, around. The, so the uh, second <laughs> storm was actually far worse than the first storm. For you guys, yes. right? Yes. yes. By just far. start Keeping running out of room. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I just, again, I just appreciate Yeah, no that. problem. Yeah. Based on uh, the uh, public feedback that I've been getting, uh, you are all heroes in what you've uh, done to keep us safe, keep the town functioning, keeping people safe. I know there were a few emergencies that arose, not many, thank God, but few. I've heard how uh, plows preceded ambulances and the uh, different departments cooperated in order to get people to where they needed to be. So on behalf of all the town, I'd like to thank you and express great appreciation for the work that you've done, the tireless, tireless hours that you put in, and through you to all your men and, all, and women and contractors and um, all those people behind the uh, wheels of different vehicles. Thank you. Thank you all. Well, again, it just, it, it, I'm, a, I'm a humble person, so it just goes to the teamwork that uh, we have through the dispatch and everything. The dispatchers know right away whenever there's anything. Everybody knows about it, including the CMD employees closest guys there long before we probably even get out of the firehouse and that's with us there plus you know my my members in the department who also have their radios who plow who are out there doing lots if they're nearby they're there sometimes uh, as well so you know we try to throw a lot of resources at it from the whole town uh, and that way we make these things become very easy very smooth and they don't you know, blow up into something that uh, would require a, a lot more. 
so it's just it's teamwork all the way around. There's no one of us that by any stretch of the imagination that uh, is working harder than the other, including all our staff. Well, I think we all feel safer. Thanks to you. Hey, th thanks for your time and coming in in the evening. Appreciate it. All right. Okay, we're on to the next uh, the next item, uh, which is Eagle Scout Proclamation. I'm sorry, the, there's another item for public comment. Oh, there's a second public comment. Yeah. Oh, okay, great. Nancy. Nancy. Yes. I thought we were getting, when, when Dave said two people signed up, I figured we were getting three for two. I didn't realize we were getting oh. three for one. <laughs> Well, you're not going to call me a hero, but um, we managed between the storms to get the excise tax bills out for calendar year 15. Really appreciate that. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I know what happens the You know, <laughs> rain or sleet or snow, <laughs> it's going to go. But um, I know some people's mailboxes were compromised and so forth. So if people did not get their bill, then they're welcome to call because you don't want to let that get uh, overdue. Nothing happens automatically except for the penalties. So if it's a bill that they shouldn't have gotten, they need to contact us for abatements and so forth. Um, anybody who did anything to their registration during the year last year might not be in this commitment. They come out every two months. So the best thing to do is to check if you're expecting a bill and you haven't gotten it. And we can tell you whether or not it got lost in the mail or whether it hasn't been issued yet. So what do they do? Oh, I don't have that date off the top of my head. You have 30 days from the date of mailing, but that fell on a weekend, so you got a couple of extra days. How it's the middle of March. Thing How will the mail? By another week? The mailbox excuse? Uh, no. <laughs> no. No. Sorry about that. <laughs> Okay, Th that's thank you. basically. Great. Thanks very much. All right. Do we have, uh, David, the, the Boy Scout Proclamation subjects? Are they coming in or? Um, I don't see them here. So do we hold it? Are you expecting them or? I was not expecting them, but I think we should hold on it just a little bit longer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, what do we have next? I guess the next item would be request of Pine Hill School CSA to donate a non-resident farm pond sticker for the 2015 auction. Is somebody here for that? Um, no. Okay. I don't think they need to. We've done this many times. Okay. And we're both approved. And, and just explain what's going on, Paul. It's a fundraiser for the Pine Hill School CSA and they have this auction and as part of the auction different people donate different things and some years ago they asked us if we would donate a farm pond sticker for the winner to be able to use farm pond and I think we've been doing this for maybe 10 years yeah, okay. And, and they're asking for a non-resident sticker, so presumably somebody's going to show up and either buy it off the resident who goes to the auction or else, um, uh, you know, maybe they'll uh, have somebody who's not a resident who's there and wants the sticker. That was confusing to me. They get a pretty good price. Yeah. It, it goes to, it, it's a non-resident, which means anybody can use it, whether you're a resident or not. And from the point of view of somebody who's making a donation, it's it doesn't really it's more flexibility, price. right? Yeah, yeah. So they're able to get a pretty good price for it, more than it would cost if they went and bought a sticker from the town. Excellent. Good. Okay. Five seconds. Is it? All right. Great. All, all in favor? Aye. All right. Good. We can check the yes box here. Okay. Next item. Uh, we have an appointment. Uh, for traffic safety, were we expecting anybody from traffic safety here? Mm -hmm. Yes, but they have a they have a posted meeting at 6:30. We have a posted meeting at 6:30 because we wanted to be understanding that this would be about seven. Then we'll wait till 6:30. Yeah. That's that's fine. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather I'd rather have the folks who said they were going to be here be here. That's that's great. Um, we don't have any routine business, so should we start talking about the uh, capital items? To, uh, yes, I think guys? we should. Dave? Everybody? Budget or capital? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, we? I think the first thing we had was capital. We can take them in any order that makes okay. sense okay. to you, Peter. But well, I put I put it down as annual town meeting warrant, and then the capital items are part of that warrant. If you look at the 
the checklist on the first page. The capital items are listed out um, so under Article 8. This thing, your tool here? Right. So this this, this um, is the latest that you know of. Yes, David? and this um, this budget review is can be very boring for the audience and people watching. I just want to say that, but it's nothing. It's we not going to be thrilling like the fire <laughs> chief was, but <laughs> no, yeah, it's we not. Can. <laughs> no. Um, under the uh, capital budget items, and, and we met with the capital budget committee. Um, I believe it was Tuesday or Wednesday night this week, and. Um, these are the items that are sitting on there right now. There's a CM&D one ton and pickup truck for a total of 180,000. I had a question on that. We're we gonna take questions at the yeah, end. Yeah, we, we, we can uh, e either way. Why don't, we do, why don't we do a hold, you know, and, and okay. anything that somebody's got a question, we'll just hold it. Okay, yeah. okay. okay hold. We'll go back forward. And then um, another CM&D item is engineering and construction on Woodland Street. Hold. And then reconstruction of Washington and Coolidge streets. <laughs> <It's gonna laughs> <hold everything. laughs> okay, so, so my system isn't working. So far. <laughs> <laughs> keep, keep going. No, keep going. Uh, uh, we might we might get through. <laughs> Maybe one that we don't. Fire de fire department uh, dry hydrant maintenance. It's forty five thousand uh, dollars. Police department um, ten cruiser hold. purchase for the take home vehicle program. Uh, town, under town buildings and facilities, there are a, a few projects that are um, bundled for a total of 57500 and some technology projects Hold for 325 on Hold on the last one. Hold on yeah. the 32.5? The 57.5. And um, there hasn't been anything put forward by town sewer, for town sewer or town water from the um, town center water options. Uh, Pine Hill School Improvements is one of the articles. Regional School Improvements, I don't have the numbers right, right now. Um, library Expansion of $1 million is a separate article. Uh, and then the standard article for improvement and embellishment of cemeteries. We also uncovered um, a bond re rescission that needs to happen. That's $200,000 from 1997 and 350000 from 2008. So we would vote to um, rescind those authorizations since they haven't been used and you can't, you couldn't use them now with that length of time that's passed, so. Okay. But what were those for? Um, I'd have to go back and look exactly okay. what they were. I'm just curious. Um, okay. Is there a number attached to this improvement in embellishment of cemeteries? Uh, no, not at this time, okay. no. So that's not gonna be helpful. All right, so we did end up holding, I think, five things. So let's go back and talk about uh, the CMD ones. So this, there was two that we didn't call, and in part it was because no request has been made on the town sewer and the town water. That's right. We didn't hold those. And I, I would say, at what point do they disappear from our list? I mean, we've been carrying them now for two or three months. We we do know that they want to put in for something we, for engineering and, and and for some amount. And I've seen emails. Uh, that have gone back and forth. I don't remember what number they were talking about, but they also didn't have anything nailed down the last time I saw the email. So uh, probably worth giving Roger a call, David, and seeing if he can get us a number by the next meeting. Okay. You think that's... But when are we going to sign and issue the warrant? What's our timeline on that? Well, you're okay. meeting with advisory on the 25th at 7 o'clock. We have a meeting for the Suckman schedule <coughs> at 5 o'clock before advisory. Uh, advisory has requested that as much as possible be voted on before we go into advisory. Uh, preferably... So that's our next meeting? Yeah. So preferably I'd like to have at least um, the budget the, under the Board of Selectmen Departments and the capital items and then for the next month before the advisory hearing you can discuss the warrant articles. Well, that's right. We need to have the warrant signed so there can be an advisory committee hearing, right? So yes, and, uh, and the whole point is that it's nice to, as a courtesy, to c carry things for people, but at some point when you carry them month after month and nothing comes forward, that, that isn't to say I'm not saying that I don't support doing some of these things, but if they're not going to bring them forward, right. they, they have to... 
right. not be included in the in the warrant. Right, but we don't. We wouldn't normally take the warrant to advisory at this the meeting. Yes. It's not. It's not the all day hearing. I think that they prefer to have it. No, but in order for them to schedule their all day hearing, right, right. we need to have a warrant well enough in advance. Right, right, of that. right, right, right. Yeah. That Just hearing, so they know what they're hearing. So yeah. when, when is the meeting that we're going to be signing the warrant? Um, that originally was my question. We can do it any time. I'm just planning in March. Yeah. In March, if, if that makes sense. Well, uh, yeah, the sooner the better. However, if you look at items 13 through 18 uh, on this list, we really haven't touched on those other than an NOI sure. and a brief discussion. And those. Uh, are doomed to fail if we don't start addressing those in earnest. But aren't the uh, town council working on that? Uh, I don't know. Those, um, those are the items that town governance had requested that selectmen drop um, 13 through 18. Well, we haven't had a healthy discussion about those. No, you haven't. Um, but, but the longer, so just having been through you know, a laundry list of these similar types of things, what, two years ago. And, uh, you know, one of the lessons we learned was we, we really didn't vet them and discuss them enough in front of cameras and in front of people. And so, you know, advisory were, you know, folks on advisory were pulling their hair out and people at town meeting were pulling their hair out because they felt like, geez, these things haven't been brewed enough, even though these are the same basic issues yeah, yeah. that we've been talking about year after year, we still haven't uh, done anything <coughs> with them in, in any of any significance so far. Um, and uh, so I don't know where that leaves us. I, th I think it leaves us, um, you know, it's not something you can cram and scramble and do at the last minute. Right. Well, so we know we have to have that discussion. I'm not yeah. sure tonight's the night. No, 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 discussion. I agree. Yeah. But uh, what I'm, I'm trying to provoke is a discussion about when there's going to be a warrant and then we're going to sign it. And having a warrant presupposes that you have the component articles right there. And so you've gone to the discussion of the missing text of yes. various articles. But I don't know if what you just said isn't true of most of what's on this list. I agree. We're working off of NOIs at this stage. And, and at some point, those further. need to become. Yeah. But I think pretty soon those need to be. I mean, yes. Yeah, so very soon. So, around so when's our first March meeting, David? Um, we can meet on the 5th. Okay. Which is the first week. And, and, and um, is when night. is this advisory hearing? The advisory hearing is towards the end of the month. Okay, but, but what's the time frame between? Our meeting in the advisory hearing, which needs to be noticed. I think that's town caucus. The fifth is town oh, caucus. Yeah, yeah so right. we're going to have to reschedule that meeting anyway. Yeah. Right. But we should do something that first week of March. I have it here. And, and I, I, offhand, I forget how many days you need between the warrant. How many days the uh, advisory committee needs from when the warrant is approved so they can publish their notice and have their hearing but I know it's we got jammed on that the last time we voted a timeline and so my question really was what the timeline was on that yeah, we've already voted right yeah so when we're going to sign the warrant so we've already set out a date yeah and voted yeah. I was just trying to figure out what that date was that's not on here David work backwards from there to does she have it here <laughs> that you've got advisory hearing is Saturday March 21st Yeah, we don't have a sign the warrant, do we? Closing the warrant, but we don't have sign. The yeah, we have closing the warrant, but not signing the warrant. And they they need to mail notice by the twelfth of March, so that's that's the last day we could we could <laughs> sign it. So um, I think we're going to sign it that first week of March. I don't see how else we could not we could do it, right? Yep. Which means we got to get through these other articles by our next meeting, David. Well, more than that, I'm suggesting that all these notices of intent that people gave us, yeah. somebody needs to send them, somebody, maybe the chair or the town administrator, needs to send them all an email saying, well, we got your notice of intent, we're putting together the warrant, we now need the actual language. Yeah. Of and, and David's got some of, those, some of those articles already, but not all of them. Yeah, there, there are two that are sitting with council. Um, 
and town governance is checking on a couple of things on the wording on theirs, but they're, um, we have most of the wording. So David, there. can we get a package with all the wording for our next meeting? Yep. And put it on the agenda for the next meeting, and then between the next meeting and the first meeting in March, we will finalize and sign the warrant and vote on as many things as we can vote on. Okay. Make sense? That's good. Okay. But going back to my original point, if if the two articles here for the town sewer and the town water coming from the uh, water commissioners, I guess, if they are going to go forward with that, they really need to help us with the specifics on this timeline. That brings us back to the capital projects. But if we're going to list these as a capital project in an article, I don't think it's good for advisory or anybody else to have unknowns. Well, they're not going to be unknown by the next time we meet and before we meet with advisory. It'll either be an amount or we're with amount. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and there is a date on here, Paul. It says we'll sign the warrant by on or before Monday, April 20th, which I think is Patriot's Day, um, which is a day ahead of when it has to be posted. But I think your, your, your bigger point is we need to have these things lined up before the well ahead of the advisory hearing so they know what the advisory hearing is going to be on. And right, and, and also part of Peter's point that the public needs to know what's going on. And, and yeah. some of these things may be worthy of some debate. I mean, we have stuff in here about beavers. Oh, we're absolutely going to have debate on everything. I mean, that's the So that's the, the more usual. That we can back up the timeline so that people have more chance to see it, to vet it, to have it go through more committees, the better off town meeting will be. So I wouldn't wait till April 20th. I don't know how we can do that. It's after we're not. The we're not. I do we just said. I think we all just agreed. We're, we're going to try to sign this by the first week of March when we have our hearing. I mean, when we have our uh, first meeting in March. And we're going to cover most of this at the last meeting in February and the first meeting in March. I think the last two years we tried to wait as long as we possibly could to get an actual your actual signature prior to that's fine. being posted. That's that's why the late date is on there because of the wording. Yeah, no, that, that, that's fine. Things things can be tweaked, but Paul, you know, Paul's point is we need the language. I know you have language on most right. of this stuff, yeah. um, but you should you know you should circu start circulating the stuff you do have language on it, please. Okay. So I had the first hold. Yes. Was really, a question as to instead of buying a new vehicle. What's wrong with buying a used vehicle? I know, so, Ed, I think that was an Ed question. Ed, could you answer this question? And what on your items for the one ton and the pickup truck for 180,000? It's two one tons. Okay, what's the difference um, between purchasing new and used? Could you answer you that? You would be able to find a one ton um, that would be suitable used. Um, it's typically a contractor vehicle small duty and um, the ones that are on the market used uh, just aren't worth the price. So this is two trucks? Yes. Two one tons. Two one tons. What, it says one ton and pickup. I thought it was a one ton and a smaller pickup. Uh, no, it should be two one tons. Okay. So it's two one ton trucks. There's no pickup. Are they 90,000 each or is it 180,000 each? I think it was um, I forget what the breakdown was. One we put a sander on, the other one we did not, so one was a little higher than the other. But the total is 180. The total is 180. Okay. But one, Ed, when you were in talking about your budget, and you, you described in brief fashion this capital item, is my recollection. And one of the things was that you were, you know, I had requested, just like last year, that you went through and, you know, listed out all of the equipment, how it's used, that sort of thing. And then, uh, also, I think pictures and descriptions of what you're getting would be helpful. So, yes. So, uh, helpful for me to evaluate, you know, how Absolutely. I feel about this. Um, right? I started to put that presentation together on PowerPoint. And that's, uh, yeah. So the question is whether we we wind up seeing that presentation or if it's just going to folks like advisory and I had town meetings. I had asked Ed that on the 25th, he and um, uh, 
have the chief chief Thompson come in to talk oh, about okay. their articles with those presentations. That's okay. Good. good. And All then right, last good. Year also, Peter, I'll uh, email it over to you. So you can yeah. No, I appreciate that. I just want to be sure that was happening. That's great. Uh, the next hold was the engineering construction of Woodland Street. Yeah, I held on that because we really have no details other than a, a, um, an NOI. And it shows CM&D as the sponsor. I don't know who technically really is the sponsor on that or the lead department. Uh, so I need a lot more information about that one in terms of why it's necessary and what, what we're actually doing that, to justify spend a 95 grand and whether or not if in fact people want to spend the 95 grand whether th the money can come from elsewhere and I know Paul had talked about chapter 90 funds the other places the uh, um, the annual or semi-annual whatever it is we get from Odessa the Odessa permit monies that uh, a slug of it wasn't used for projects last year and probably could be repurposed and that would then suggest we need an additional or different wording in the uh, warrant to because I think we have to get uh, transfer, town meeting yeah. approval transfer of those types of funds so it's those sorts of things all bundled into that one item um, capital uh, capital budget pieces. committee and advisory have, have been talking about the funding on capital items on which way to fund them but well, is that is that something that's in play what Peter just raised with alternative funding, yeah. In the, Odessa, I mean, the, the Odessa money specifically. I mean, that's on the table, yeah. It is, okay. So that's something for Irene to get. Uh, welcome, Irene, by the way, our new town account. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, what we have in the Odessa balance is committed and not committed that hasn't been used because I know we had trouble figuring that number out yeah. in years past. Previously. And it's pretty important, and it, and it gets to be a pretty meaningful number. And, and I think the other issue with, with the Woodland Street improvements, although I, I – understand the problem and I, I know there's a, a potentially an engineered solution there's also potentially a solution that involves a stop sign and just yeah yeah uh, that's you know looking at the looking at the alternative which is a three thousand dollar alternative instead of a ninety thousand I totally agree with you because I, I thought we solved that problem with the always stop but I guess we're talking about different, a different part of Woodland we're talking about we're talking about Woodland yeah, and East schooling. I get that and, yeah. and I'm with you in terms of why uh, always stop West or schooling. whatever Sorry. fix that problem as well there was a, a traffic safety committee vote on that. I just can't remember if it was to support or not support that. Support. Of support. The um, 95 grand redesign yeah. of the intersection. Yeah, it's East Coast. So the 90 is the redesign, but there's also there's also a potential not to redesign and just put stop signs up. That's not what you support. No, no, we supported the redesign. We didn't vote on it. Did not vote on it. Okay. Oh. A different way to ask that question. So you did not vote on on anything other the than the redesign, software. right? Okay. No, we would have brought that to you. Okay. We need your support on that. Okay. Well, that was that was that was that just was something. Yeah, that was just something that uh, you know, if this if this ninety isn't the right uh, spend or if it doesn't get approval, is there another way to slow traffic down at that turn? And I think stop signs that are enforced slow traffic down. It's it's really working at the other at the other intersection there. And that, yeah, that was so, a really good fix. Yeah, so uh, and so what I know about this so far is not enough to get me to say let's spend taxpayers' money to the tune of nearly a hundred grand. Okay. So just FYI. We definitely didn't FYI present. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so tonight. Okay. Well, I understand. All right, and we had a hold on. Um, let's do this last CMD one and then go back to the appointment. And I think since traffic safety is here, doing the CMD ones makes some sense this is reconstructing washington and coolidge streets this is the one um i think this is the one ed talked with us about when he was in here doing his presentation yeah and i guess it went in one ear and out the other ear for me uh, i didn't appreciate the uh, significance of it or that we had a uh, a warrant article to the tune of three quarters of a million bucks for some road work um so i i I'm forgetful, but well, this is where I had jumped in and said that I th thought I could be helpful in trying to get state funds for this, rather than using taxpayer dollars. And we then had a lively discussion, and we ended it by I think the chair asking me to give a report about what state funds have been appropriate for other projects, which I 
subsequently did. Yeah. But going back to uh, to this, I mean, we could do the same process to try and get state some or all state funds for this. This is a uh, while it's a town-owned road, it's it's a state-numbered highway. Most of the wear and tear in this is not from the local taxpayers at all. It's from uh, interstate commerce, essentially, passing through Sherburne. So I, I think there's a compelling case for state funds to contribute all or part of this rather than our asking the good folks of Sherburne to come up with this kind of money. And I, and I think Ed's point when he was in here was just that there are sections of that road right now that are, uh, I don't know if he used the word unsafe, but very, uh, very broken up, da potentially dangerous potholes. And I went out and drove it after that <laughs> meeting, and then I did talk with Ed, and I think he was in agreement. There are some stretches that are worse than other stretches. It may be ideal to do the project at once so you, ha you can just do it seamlessly, but there also may be a way to do shorter segments that are the most in need now and save some of the rest of the segments for a time when you might have state funding. I don't know if state funding is something you can turn around quickly, Paul. Um, the four plus million that you pointed out from last year is great and hopefully that'll be released, but that is also earmarked for certain projects. Uh, if I remember right, it's Goulding Lake and Forest Street, including uh, stormwater improvements. Yes, and that depends on our getting the engineering done and submitting plans and making sure we're ready to go. Then they'll release the money. And right now we've done nothing on that project as far as I know. Right, yeah, it's, and it's not in here. We didn't find an NOI or a piece of paper other than, you know, we had a brief discussion with Ed on it. So, you know. but so, so, so you're saying if, if, the town, if the town invests in the engineering for that project, then the state will have that money to pay us back? And to get us going on the construction? I was doing it the other way around. I okay. was saying the state is not likely to release money for a project that's not ready to go. Okay, and I'm, I'm saying it the other way around, which is if the project is ready to go, will the state, is the state likely to release money? Because we all know the state has a budget problem and is hanging on to money. This is borrowed money. It's not part of the operating budget. It's part okay. of the transportation bond. And, uh, and, and so that, so your point is that's, and I just don't know. So it's off budget, but also immediately available if the town shows that it's ready to go? If the... I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, much. If Mass Department of Transportation okays the project, it is easy for the Commonwealth to borrow the funds to get this project done. But as far as I know, no one really knows what the project is in any clear way. We don't know the scope of it. We've never seen any plans on it. And so this is, isn't one that I think you can just pick up the phone right. and press a button and bingo, a check arrives for $4.6 We actually have to do some homework, flesh this project out, better define it so people know what it is. Okay. I'm not the only one who doesn't know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. But, he, but back when we had that discussion and we did discover, there is earmarked the 500 grand and the 4.1 million, I think it was, yep. for the town of Sherwood for other specific purposes, right? However, the, the, que the question I'm trying to get to is that, that earmark, those earmarks, just like the Pine Hill million dollar earmark, are monies that who knows when they're likely to be brought to the town or realized by the town. Not likely at all for the Pine Hill Road because we've already accomplished the purpose and no one's asking now for the kind of road that's reflected in those right. drawings. So so then you go to the 4.6 million that's earmarked for other roadway designs and sidewalk work and so forth. And stormwater. So, and stormwater. There is, right, so, there is a sidewalk stretch on Main Street yeah, also. Yeah. yeah. So my, my, my question is that on the 730 or, you know, going to the state to get for this, this effort of you know, Washington and Coolidge Streets, if that would be similar to that, another earmark that may be there for year after year before we get to see the dollars. That's, that's the difference right. here is we've got engineering, don't we? I, I think we have engineering for this fix, or is it just conceptual at this point? Do you know? Ed? Well, you Ed? Know? Ed? Washington Street? No, 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 the, uh, the fix at, at uh, Woodland. 
No, what, what oh, are we talking about? Did you talk about Washington? Washington? Okay, all right. I'm talking Washington. Okay. <laughs> talking well, so Washington's just paving then. You sure you Washington's just Washington's just paving now. So what? What you, you, you're talking well, about? That's what Paul's talking, talking about. Going to the state for, for paving for earmark for the 730. I think is what you're suggesting. Yeah. Well, there's there's three different ways we can do it. One is that we can spread the project over three years and pay it out of the chapter 90 chapter funds. Right. Yeah. The second way is to go on the, what's called the uh, transportation improvement plan where communities put in their projects and then there's this MPO, the Metropolitan Planning Organization, reviews all the projects, put them in priority for funding and then they get funded entirely by the state. And then the third is to get the legislature to do an earmark for this. So, so the first two or three are, are more liquid, if you will, than the earmark process, which seems to be highly... I think the last time we talked about this, we talked about spreading it out over three years to use the Chapter 90 money. Well, I don't... That was a possible... That was a suggestion, think, yeah. Yeah, but I think that, from where I sit, that's subject to roadway Chapter 90 money priorities and whether this falls at the top of the list or yeah. high up on the list, you know, because it's... Obviously, going to use a big slug of you know. You, you can the do it. You can that. do a tip project. The tip projects are typically involved where um, it's going to involve water, sewer, drainage, um, major roadway construction. And what you do is you notify the state that you want to do the project. They approve the project, and you have to accomplish all the engineering. And then you go back to waiting for the funding. Um, it's a very long process. Um, the other one is our Chapter 90 funds, which we get a little bit each year. Um, the issue that we have is the 65, 70 miles of roadway that the Chapter 90 funds that we're not getting is just not sufficient for resurfacing. I don't think they'll do a tip project for resurfacing. It generally involves far more construction. But isn't the issue in Washington Street, you, you've got immediate need for certain Immediate need for, uh, for paving. Uh, we've got some major areas that are delaminating, um, bottles. Um, like you said, I could actually go through and pick and choose a couple of different spots, Scars Hill, in front of Town Hall, maybe over on um, the Holliston line. Um, typically, I kind of like to kind of go through the whole roadway, but there are a couple of definite, defined sections that we could break up. Um, then the question just becomes, um, do you just bite the bullet, do the whole thing, and have one nice fluid roadway, or do you want to break it up? Well, let me, if I could, it would be nice to know, you know <laughs> see the drawing of what you're talking about. And for me to understand how that relates to the road work you did do on North Main uh, last year, wasn't it? Uh, with nice paving all the way to Natick, pretty long stretch of road. Are we talking similar? And, and I think you did that out of Chapter 90 funds. Yes. yes. And I don't know what the magnitude of that, but it wasn't the uh, 700 grand. Uh, no, it wasn't. Um, the, the stretch of North Main, I think, is about half of the distance on Washington Street. I've got all the estimates that I can pull and send to you on my calculations. Um, yeah, I I'm not second guessing or saying you, you, you didn't do it right, but I'm just trying to appreciate what we're dealing with here. All right, so what do we need to make a decision on this before the next well, right, I'm, the next meeting? I, 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 I'm um, not happy with going to the voters for 750000 of paving, asking everybody to vote which would be a proposition two and a half override, asking everybody to increase their taxes for a road that's largely used by out-of-towners. It, it just it, it inherently seems not fair to the taxpayers. At least if we, we, we should make every effort to, f to find other ways to do it and go to the taxpayers only as a last resort. That's that's where I come from on this. Yeah, I I guess uh, I uh, I think he's making great sense there. I don't have a good enough appreciation about the paving needs here and how it relates to our other paving priorities, and the, you know that's uh, which are typically funded by Chapter 90. For me, so and I'd I'd love to get state money for anything we can get state money for, but I also think we have to be practical, and if state money is out there and it doesn't really come in or we need to do something to get it and this is an immediate need i think we have to keep our roads up and we're way behind on on maintenance and ed has explained that to us any number of times so i don't know if this is the right number or if that's the right project it seems a little bit rich to me but 
I'm not adverse to spending some money to fix the parts of the roads that really need fixing. Well, there's, there's no question that the state doesn't move fast. I mean, you can't, you can't tell me, you know, get the legislature to appropriate 750000 and expect it tomorrow. I, it would take, we would see that maybe in November or December under the normal process, which leads me to the question of, we've been looking at road priorities and Chapter 90 priorities for years. I mean, I've been doing this for almost 20 years now, and this street hasn't been, I don't recall this street being on the list as anything urgent, so I gather there's been some some immediate breakup of the street or some some damage that's occurred to the street, maybe with all this plowing that you have to do. Can't we stabilize the, the, the road? We, we absolutely have to stabilize the road, but can't we stabilize the road enough to hold it until there's time to explore ways of funding it? Um, yeah, absolutely. We can, uh, we can go along and grind out certain sections, um, but again, we beat a, a major arterial route. Um, I like to get along and pay. It's, it's my job to bring the issues to you. Um, I'm identifying the road as a one in need of repair and need of paving. Um, this, uh, next year, we want to take care of Maple Street and uh, looking at the list of priorities as they're coming up and what we have for an immediate need, I identified these two roadways as being an arterial route and we want to throw a little extra money and get these done and kind of, we have, we have a rolling list of uh, projects that we'd like to do and these are the ones that are, um, in my opinion, um, the ones that need to be addressed. So I have your, uh, had your March 2014, Chapter 9, 2014 road work. So we did North Main Street, it was 128 grand on that baby, and we approved that, okay, just so. See, I carry this stuff around. That's why I like a piece of paper. Unbelievable. I'm to go back and look at, all right? <laughs> and so I also have your last version of priorities here. So let's just see that baby. And uh, you, you give them conditions one to five. I don't remember which is worse. Five is worse or one's worse? or one's more higher priority, let me see. Thoroughbred Drive was a one. And, and Page list? Farm Road's a five on There's condition. A side, it's a sidewalk list. No, oh, that's your sidewalk list. Oh, wait. Sidewalk. I guess they don't have your, uh, your hoopy scoop on. Uh, it would be nice to have this on the road. I do right? have uh, previous years. On We've seen that, but I don't carry it all the time. Well, and you have said that that road was last done 10 years ago, and, and just from from a lifespan standpoint, it's at near the end of its... Yeah, I believe what I said was, I think it was 10 years ago, the town floated a bond for reconstruction of uh, roadways. Yeah, here's my notes right on the top. Where's priority list? So, yeah. Um, <coughs> we, um, I believe it was 10 years ago, and you guys would find a far better than me of exactly what it was, but they floated a... Uh, bond and we banged out a number of different roadways all at once. And the point I'm trying to make is it's now 10 years later, the average life of the roadway, so you've got another million dollars that you're adding to your priority list. That's going to be Elliot, you had something to ask? You're talking about Cooled Street. I've said this before. You come out of Spain Street, you get a yield sign. You come out of Cooled Street, you got a stop sign. You come down Kendall, you don't have any sign. So you've got a yield sign, a stop sign, and a no sign. Now this is just stupid Massachusetts idiotic motoring. And uh, it should be a three-way stop. I've said it before. Uh, people in this state just don't understand what three-way stop means. They don't even know what one-way stop means. But it should be a three-way stop. When people come up to that intersection, they should know what they're supposed to do. Right now, you come up there, you look around, you say, wait a minute, I've got to stop a year. Uh, uh, I, I don't know, this other guy, I guess so. And uh, you should know right now, even before you get to the intersection, 
there should be a sign there that you can all agree upon and it should be three-way stop. But uh, the idiots in this state just don't grasp it. They've had these all-way stop signs in other states for a hundred years, I guess. Uh, first one I saw was in Illinois about 50 years ago. And uh, we just don't seem to get it. Now, let's put a three-way stop up there and uh, live happily. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Susan, you had a question or something? Yeah, um, twofold. One, I just heard that what we have at Pine Hill is the final plan and that was done because that's not my recollection at town meeting as far as $80,000 was spent just get it to this point. But the ultimate plan, and that's why that $1 million was supposedly earmarked, was for the pay thing. Uh, that's one question I'm a little confused on. And as far as the uh, transportation improvement um, funding and all the TIP funding, we need to be careful as to what you wish for. If you do a search for how the town of Howard, they just went through this last year. It was a $600,000 project. The town didn't want to spend the Chapter 90 funds, so they went for the TIP fund funding. State says, okay, but now it mush mushroomed into a $4.3 million project because with the TIP funding, it's supposed to be multimodal transportation, so it was five foot sidewalks on both sides of the road, it was the bike lane, and all that. And so there was actually a citizen's petition that went forward at town meeting to say that we, will, the town would not accept the TIP funding. We're 15 years ahead of them. Yeah. They've already done that for North Main Street. <laughs> Thank you, okay. Uh, let's let's get to the appointment. Are you guys okay with uh, going back on yes, the agenda sir. since everybody <coughs> seems to be here? All right, and so David, you want to give us the background on this? There was a vacancy in the Traffic Safety Committee, and um, the position, or the, the vacancy was advertised for 30 days in the local paper. There were two applicants. Uh, one was Kristen Buckler, a current appointed associate member, and Brian Clark, uh, a new interest, and um, the Board of Selectmen um, have the information provided by both applicants in their packets, and a, a printout of the press release that we sent out to the, um, or that was printed in the paper. So we have one vacancy, and you also have an option that you could appoint um, the full seat, and you could appoint the associate seat. The, uh, the packet said it included a uh, recommendation from traffic safety, but my packet didn't include any. They were recommendation from traffic safety. Traffic safety. Was there a written document? No. Traffic safety is, um, yes, we they met tonight. Yes, but no, we also weighed in on it. Back oh, before the original, right. Before we, on January 8th, we were notified that there was another candidate, and so we just met again tonight, and we still stand by, we just took a vote, and we still, we, re, we reaffirm our earlier vote of support of Kristen Buckley. Okay. And I know that um, Brad and Brent could not be here tonight, but he sent an email to um, the town administrator stating that uh, Kristen is without, without doubt the best qualified candidate for a number of reasons. And, and does the committee have a thought on uh, appointing an assistant? In other words, filling the assistant slot, also associate, associate slot. Associate, certainly. Well, we did. We voted on it. Yes, so we will reach out to Brian Clark, who is the other candidate for this position, and ask him to come in. We've never met him. Yeah. So he would be considered as an associate. Correct. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. I, I didn't understand that. Are you saying you recommend that we can vote? appoint him as an associate member or are you saying you don't know him so don't do anything that's for you to decide we we can't say because we've never met the gentleman what we're here for is to say that we would like the Kristen Buckler to be appointed to the vacant seat the voting seat right now we have a meeting next week I think that's, that's the however however you vote if there's um if there's and if whoever doesn't get the seat, we would contact them 
and ask them to please contact the Traffic Safety Committee and see if they're interested in that associate seat. Can I just ask a question about our packet? Um, so on the lead page, David, this, it talks about the term of this appointment will only be in effect until town elections. Is that what we're talking about here? That, yes. That makes no sense. Paul Leach's term was, uh, he, his term was expiring this coming June. Which yes, is not, not town election. elections. It's not election. It's, it's not elected. What's no, elected? Not. Traffic safety for the information of the yeah. viewers is not an elected right. <coughs> That's right. committee. Right. So this would be a term to, you know, it's just a Paul's term, through Paul's term. Basically. Yeah, it's June 15th. June 15th of, the, of 15. Okay. That's important to know. Um, and, the, and David, the materials here in the packet, <clears throat> one of the applications is missing items one through five of a seven point application. And the other one's missing items five, six, and seven. Um, and five, six, and seven are where you get the key background. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the things that I, I was going to raise myself is that our applications seem very sparse. I mean, it's great to know somebody's name and where they live. That's, that's always useful information. But I would love to know, it's not just, it's not just me who should know this. The, the public needs to know why we select one person over another. And therefore, what is it that makes one candidate a, a reasonable choice? And when there's nothing stated, it's hard to say what the basis was. 